Hi everyone, welcome back to Java 1 for all. Let's continue talking about primitive types and now we are going to talk a little bit about the that letter that we were adding after float and double. So as you know, basically the primitive types with one exception, the boolean, they hold numbers inside. And these numbers, they have a size, they have a limit. So every time we create a primitive type, we kind of have a limit. Either we remember or not, the limits are these ones. So what does that mean? That means that there is a limit of numbers that you can put inside. And if you try to put more numbers than it is allowed, you will get a compilation error. Going back here. So we said, for example, the byte can hold up to a positive 127. If I try to use 128, we get an exception, actually a, comp a compilation error. Let us say, hey, uh, actually this is an integer. So you should not put this inside a byte. Now, remember that we said we have basically two types, the integer values that are not decimal and of course decimal values. Let's use the float and double as examples. Every time you type a number directly into your code, this means that you are literally typing the number, we have a default value. So if you type a number that is an integer, by default, it will be an int. If you type a decimal number, by default, it will be a double. It's funny because the byte is the only exception for, for that rule. So if I type 128, it will become uh, integer, but 127, yeah, it kind of uh, cast this is something that we're going to talk in this video to byte automatically. Uh, for example, short, it holds up to 32,000 something. If I type 33,000, we cannot add this value and because it is an integer. It's uh, interesting because, for example, short, it's, uh, the value is lower than integer, so short is two bytes. And as you can see, after we type 128, it could fit in, inside a short, but it becomes an integer. Okay, so going back to the, the float here. If you are typing a decimal number, you have to be explicit if they are not double. So in this case, as you saw in the previous video, we can use F or lowercase, but remember conventions. Now, what happens if I try and I, I would like to force the numbers inside a different type. Well, we have something that we call cast. And by casting, you are telling the compiler, I know what I'm doing, trust me, and go ahead. Let me give you one small example. Uh, let's use the age here. Let's say that we have someone that's uh, kind of immortal. Let's keep typing here until we get an error saying that this is too big for integer. Okay. So this is a long number and I will force this to become a long number by adding L. Remember, every time you type a number, it's basically int. So if you go above what integer supports, it will tell, hey, this is way too big for, for an integer. So this is actually a long number. And now we have another error that's saying, mm, this is long, long has more space in memory and actually integer don't have that much space. You cannot do that. But as you are a smart developer, you are going to say, hey, I can do it and I would like you to force this guy and I know what I'm doing. I trust the behavior to become an integer. So basically when you cast, you are forcing the compiler to do something that it probably will cause you problems. And you see the H here? Look, the number is this one. I have no idea how big is this, but you will see that the results will be completely different. And this is the value you get. And why is that? Because you are using way more space, way more bits that you can put inside your integer space. So basically remember the bucket with water and the glass? This is what is happening. The compiler is basically saying, okay, since you told me to do this, I will just throw out some bits here and I will put whatever is left. And that's why you get this uh, weird number. Basically the compiler is taking out some bits until that value will fit in this memory space. And it is the same thing. If you want, for example, this is a double, but 
you would like to force this to become a float. Now, this is interesting because you see that the value is pretty small and you know for sure that this value can fit inside a float. And in this case, it will work. So I will come here and I will press Ctrl D to duplicate. Ctrl Shift F10. And we do have the float value that was actually originally a double. So that's the problem with cast. You need to be sure of what is happening. If you force and things are not exactly the way you expect, you will get weird behaviors. So one really nice example is, uh, as I said in the, the previous video, is the, the Gangnam Style video on YouTube. If you do a quick Google search, you will see the number, the weird number that was uh, showing up there when the variable blew up. Another example is, remember that I said all the values except the float and double are integers and the float and double, they hold decimal numbers. We can do the same cast for example, I will say here, I will give a small value, 155.35. And I will say, okay, this is a double, you know for sure this is a double. And I will say, mm, I would like this to become long. It could be integer as well. So what happens when you do this uh, decimal to integer? Mm, let's see. You are going to see the compiler will basically just ignore everything that's after the dot. So all the decimal values will be ignored. But if you have a really big decimal number and you try to put in an integer, it's going to remove the decimal value plus some bits. So this is how the, the casting works. Well, I think that's enough information for my video. Let's continue in the next uh, class. See you there.